entropy in Boltzmann formulation is just, look, when you look at a system, a macroscopic thing, a, a glass of water with an ice cube in it, or cream and coffee, or an egg, you don't see every little bit of that system. You don't see the molecules. You don't see the atoms of which it is made. So let's take cream and coffee as a classic example, okay? If the cream and coffee are separate from each other, there's a number of ways you could imagine changing the positions of the individual molecules in the cream or molecules in the coffee so that macroscopically you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But if you started mixing them together, if you started taking the cream and mixing it into the coffee, you would be able to tell the difference. So there's a small number of rearrangements you could imagine. Whereas if it's all mixed up, right? If all the cream and all the coffee are mixed together, then there are a large number of ways you can rearrange the atoms and molecules to make it look exactly the same. So Boltzmann says that's what entropy is. Entropy is a way of counting how many ways there are to rearrange the fundamental constituents of a system so that it macroscopically looks the same to us. From that point of view, it's not at all surprising that entropy goes up as a function of time. It's simply because there are more ways to be high entropy than to be low entropy. If you have a medium entropy system and just let it go, let it do its thing, let it evolve into the universe, it will naturally increase in entropy since there are so many more configurations that look that way. That part is easy. The hard part is if you have a medium entropy system, why was it lower entropy in the past? If it started lower entropy, you can explain why, but you seem to need a new principle to explain that. And indeed, that is exactly true. Think of the arrow of time this way. There's no arrow of space, right? If you were an astronaut floating out there in space, there'd be no difference between up, down, left, right, forward, backward. But you know if you're here on Earth, there's an arrow of space, you can tell the difference between up and down. Nobody thinks that arrow of space is deeply ingrained in the fundamental nature of reality. It's just because you're in the vicinity of an influential object, the Earth. The same story is true for the arrow of time. The arrow of time, according to modern physics, is not built into the fundamental nature of reality. We experience it because we live in the aftermath of an influential event, the Big Bang, 14 billion years ago. For reasons that cosmologists do not understand, the Big Bang was very low entropy. The early universe was very orderly compared to what it could have been. Now, why is that true? Good question. Very active research question at the frontiers of modern cosmology. But for our purposes today, we don't know why. But it's true. The Big Bang had a low entropy. And once you say that, it's clear that entropy is going to go up. It's been going up for the last 14 billion years. It's going to continue to go up billions and billions of years into the future.